Hello everyone and welcome to the Atec channel. Today we're going to look at a breakthrough in the field of geothermal energy. Geothermal energy has the potential to become a permanent energy source for countries around the world. However, it hasn't been the most popular renewable energy option because it's difficult and expensive to drill deep enough into the earth to reach high enough temperatures. Yet a startup has recently uncovered a solution that could solve this problem. It's actually a well-established nuclear fusion technology that, when reapplied to geothermal energy, could unlock the true potential of geothermal energy. The idea of tapping into the earth for a stable heat source for a pump system is really appealing for homes, but we can also tap deeper into the earth for the constant super hot heat source power turbines to generate electricity for our cities and towns. Unlike solar and wind power, geothermal energy could provide a more stable supply of clean energy, this while occupying virtually no land. On the other hand, currently drilling techniques cannot affordably reach the hottest places on earth to unlock this potential. Indeed, penetrating deep into hard rock is tricky and expensive as exploring. Digging wells accounts for about 40% of the total initial cost for the geothermal installation. As a reminder, a short presentation of geothermal energy, the Earth's inner core is about as hot as the sun, which is why it's often referred to as the sun underfoot. The good news is that it will take billions of years for the Earth to cool down, fueled by waste heat, the creation of our planet, and the decay of radioactive elements. This underground sun gives rise of the natural hydrothermic reservoirs. Basically, the heat from the Earth's core pushes water towards the permeable rocks until it hits a wall. Aside from having a carbon-free outdoor barbecue, the hot underground steam can be used to drive a turbine and generate electricity. Only other binary power plant designs do not use hot groundwater to generate steam directly. To be more precise, after being extracted and heated for about 204 degrees Celsius, the water passes through a heat exchanger. Here, the geothermal water transfer. This then generates the steam that will power the turbine. The plan includes a condenser to convert the steam back into liquid and reuse it. The global geothermal potential is enormous. Harvesting just one-tenth of one percent of the world's heat could meet the world's energy needs for two million years. And given this warmer weather, geothermal energy accounts for only 0.5% of the global electricity production, mainly because the accessible part of this energy is the heat dispersed in the Earth's crust. In fact, most hydrothermal reservoirs, such as volcanoes, springs, and geysers, are found only along tectonic plates. Yet, with vision-inspired drilling technology, the true potential of geothermal energy may be closer than ever. This innovation could allow us to reach areas less than 10 kilometers deep in a much more cost-effective and efficient manner. Indeed, geothermal sources have much higher temperatures and are more widespread. Although cost-effective, the potential of solar and wind farms is undermined by their intimacy. Instead, a continuous green energy source like geothermal could give us a powerful weapon against global warming. It all started with the work of Paul Boskov, a senior research engineer at MIT in the Plasma Science and Fusion Cluster. In 2012, he demonstrated demonstrated an application of a gyrotron to vaporize rock instead of it crushing it. This technology will enable ultra-deep geothermal drilling. So, how exactly does it work? You would have a metal tube in which the geotron emits high-frequency electromagnetic waves to melt the underground rock. The millimeter waves spewed out by the gyro trying to pass through the incoming rock nanoparticles without undergoing significant scattering. This means the beam doesn't lose much energy before reaching the surface of the target. But what about the costs? To vaporize a valuable rock, you'd have to make an 8-inch diameter hole about 10 kilometers deep. It would cost about half a million dollars in electricity to vaporize an equivalent volume of granite in that size. Considering these depths, the total possible cost of the mechanical borehole is on the order of $30 million. So we're talking about saving tens of millions of dollars. But there's another key economic benefit when they're using thermal rays. When you rely on traditional mechanical processes, you need a high-density fluid. It is called drilling mud, and it is used to counteract the surrounding pressure of the wall and prevent it from collapsing. Millimeter waves, on the other hand, do not require drilling mud. It is possible to drill deeper, more stable boreholes without adding drilling mud, which is another aspect that they can make the whole process more cost-effective. Based on ultra-rock energy technology, the economic feasibility studies at the Newberry Volcano site, the technique described above would reduce the discounted cost of geothermal electricity by 50%. In addition to them, the company estimated that geothermal power based on this technology could have a lower cost than onshore wind, and even solar. Its fusion-inspired drilling technology isn't even just confirmed by lab science. 
Last February, an MIT spinoff raised $40 million to develop this revolutionary technology. They started to use a 10 kilowatt gyrotron to draw a hole 10 centimeters deep. They ended up drilling holes 1 meter deep in much larger rocks. Quaze has partnered up with Ultra Rock to create their first pilot project where they aim to drill a hole near the Newberry Volcano. In fact, Ultra Rock believes that this clear crater could be one of the largest untapped geothermal resources in North America. The presence of a shallow magma body means the rock is much hotter there than other aircraft craters. Quaze plans to build its first large-scale hybrid drilling rig in the basin in 2024. Quay's first use will be conventionally rotary drill rig to descend in the bedrock, where it'll activate its gyro-powered rock vaporization system to reach 20 kilometers deep in temperatures of up to 500 degrees Celsius. In theory, it sounds like Quay has a good chance of reaching its goal. In practice, they could simply swap a coal or natural gas-generated system plant that continuously hot underground steam to run the turbines. Geothermal drilling can run into other problems. The deeper you dig, the more energy is lost. To compensate for this loss of energy, you have to use energy sources, such as electricity from the grid or diesel generators, but their system must also take into account the pressure losses of gas. This is due to the friction between the gas and the walls of the pipe. The lower the gas goes, the higher it is. They may have other disadvantages of Ultra Deep. The digging of crucial walls could destabilize geological layers. This could trigger seismic activity that has cooled. When you drill for geothermal today, you're most likely drilling near tectonic boundaries because that's where the heat from the east coast comes from to the surface. So you're very intentionally drilling near problematic edges with very young geological on very unstable geology. When you have the luxury of going deeper without an exponential cost increase, you must get away from those instabilities. The development of fusion-inspired drilling would allow us to exploit many super-hot fluids by overcoming geographic and geological limitations. It could also unleash a perpetual source of geothermal energy and for an independent zero-carbon energy world. However, while thermal rays are based on solid technology, there are still economic barriers and testing to go through before reaching industrial scale. If you enjoyed our topic today, feel free to like this video. To enjoy more videos like this, subscribe to our channel, and most importantly, leave us suggestions for future topics. Activate that notification bell to be among the first to see our next video, and we hope to see you soon on ATEC.